Okay, a little bit of an experiment today. So you see these things come up on YouTube every so often, people make a video about them. It's hamstick dipole, so it comes in two bits. So you've got the uh, black loaded coil bit that screws into the bottom. They come with a uh, 3 8 by 24 thread, which is what the old uh, CB antennas use. You can put it on a mag mount on your car. And uh, you've got the second part, which uh, screws in the top there. And uh, you tune it by sliding the whip in and out. And usually you have to uh, trim these down a little bit just to make them resonant. They come in all sorts of uh, flavors. So you got, um, they start off, I think at about four meters. And uh, I think you can get them for 160 meters, but they're, obviously they're inefficient. They're quite short on that band. So they become inefficient and uh, very narrow banded. But I've seen a couple of people Put these in a dipole array so you can get a centerpiece and use two of them so I've got a second one here and um, basically make a dipole out of it. Um, I've seen people do that but I've not really seen anybody do any comparisons as with regards to other antennas to see how efficient it would be. So the plan today is I'm going to build one of these and um, I want to test it compared to my main station antenna. Now the reference antenna, it's an ultra beam rotary dipole. So it's basically six through to 20, it's a rotary dipole. And uh, when you get onto 30 and 40 meters, it folds back on itself. So effectively it becomes a shortened, I guess, linear loaded dipole, but uh, it's mounted quite high. It's about 13, 14 meters or so above the ground. And uh, I quite often do live streams from here at my home QTH and uh, I regularly get 5, 9 plus 30 reports. So there's several different varieties of these um, ham sticks. So this is a, actually a shortened one, which is, uh, this is a 40 meter one. This is going to be a little inefficient, but uh, I guess, okay, if you want shorter, you know, if you, length is a problem. I've gone for the full size. Now, the full size either comes in a 250 watt version, so what I'm setting up today should be absolutely fine with any of the 100 watt radios on the market and even the 200 watt radios. So if you've got the um, MP version of the 101D that I've got behind me or uh, the new ICOM that's coming out, you should be able to run those with that. They also do a high power 600 watt version. So I've got two of the 250 watt versions. Uh, they cost about 20, 25 quid, depending on which one you go for. Um, the high power ones, I think, are about 40, 45 pounds. They're a bit more expensive. Um, you can get these plastic dipole uh, centers here. These, uh, I think I only paid about nine pounds for that. I've got two of them. So this one I put on the temporary mast. My thinking is this would be good for um, like POTA or SOTA where you've got limited space. You could either put up that mast or put it on a tripod. The other one I've actually bolted onto this. Um, this is a one and a half inch or one and three quarter inch aluminium pole, which is what we're going to be use, using for testing. Uh, just a couple of bolts through and uh, attach it onto there and we'll stick it up outside. Um, if you're doing something more permanent, they do do uh, steel attachments as well, steel uh, dipole mounts for these, but uh, this is just temporary for testing. So. We'll get it up outside and uh, then we'll get on there, do some tests and see what we find. Right, so we're all set up. I've got it wired into a spare coax feed coming into the shack. I've got it on my uh, FTDX101 behind me here. So we're going to uh, do a side by side comparison. So tuning, I did have to cut the whips down to uh, shorten it. it. When I first set it up, it was resonant about uh, six and a half megs, so it was below the 40 meter band. I had to cut a little bit off, uh, cut both sides equally, and um, the SWR was a little bit higher. I tuned it about two meters or so, two to three meters, so a little bit above head height, um, above the ground, and the SWR was quite high. But uh, once I got it roughly in the right ballpark, elevated to about six meters, that SWR dropped, and I put an SWR plot in the video for you. It looked uh, 
really quite nice. It's very, very narrow bandwidth, so you're not going to cover the whole of the 40 meter band, well, unless you use the uh, tuner, internal tuner on the radio, it might widen it out. But uh, the question is, how well is it going to work? Okay, so just as an initial test here, I've got the FTDX101 here, so I can connect up two separate antennas. I've got two receivers, so my receiver on the left with antenna one is my main uh, rotary dipole antenna, which is at 13 and a half to 14 meters above the ground. And on the right hand VFO here, I've got the hamstick dipole. So you can compare the signal strength between the two. And I've just got a couple of guys here having a rag tube. And uh, you can just compare the signal strength between the meters and you notice that actually there's not that much difference. In fact, sometimes the uh, hamsticks get a stronger signal than the uh, rotary dipole and vice versa. So it tends to swap and change a little bit as propagation changes. So what I found works quite well is if I put the main antenna, my transmit antenna in my left ear, and the hamstick dipole use that as a receive antenna in my right ear and uh, split it in the headphones, then uh, it works quite well. Uh, but I can give you a comparison here. So I'm going to bring up this left VFO first. So this is the uh, this is the main antenna. Zero MWSM one of you said I couldn't agree more actually. That's a Dan I like Dan about the In fact, you can actually uh, see that the hamstick dipole is uh, a bit better off. Oh yeah, I was buying an acorn. If I bring that down, bring in the hamstick dipole. Yeah, I found around all the locals, so you know, all the usual stuff. So the hamstick dipole's mm, dropped off a bit and the main rotary dipole is, is stronger. No, I like Dan. But then you can Bill see his propagation's like changing. Um, this one's creeping back up again. So you get sometimes when this is stronger and that one's weaker and vice versa. So it makes it really good second antenna. So that is on the, uh, that's on the Hamstick Dipole. And we bought new tubes from when we bought the amps. I got mine from... And that is on the main antenna. Who I'd previously bought tubes off in the past. I used to get, I bought some GS35Bs off him. They were brand new in the box. To my ear, there isn't really that much difference in the receipt between the two. Okay, so I must admit, I was a little surprised on the radio side by side comparison how little difference there was between the two antennas. Uh, I've done some whisper testing now and uh, the results are in. And to be honest, I'm, I'm actually a little bit shocked. So, I mean, I could give you raw numbers, signal strengths, data, and all the rest of it, but I think a picture tells a thousand words. So let's start off with the hamstick. So this is the combined transmit and receive of the hamsticks. Uh, this test was over half an hour. So I did the hamsticks for half hour, then switched over to the main antenna for half an hour. Now, I know that's not overly scientific, Propagation can change slightly, but I don't think it made that much difference. So if we take a good look at this, we're, we're getting out all over Europe and there's uh, one up into Iceland as well. Now, if I switch on to the other chart, which is the same chart, but for the main antenna, which was 30 minutes later, again, up into Iceland, there's a couple of extras going out past uh, Sweden into Finland and uh, slightly further south into um, Monaco, Barcelona, um, Spanish region. So that could be down to propagation change in the over the period of the hour that I was doing this test. But ultimately, those graphs don't actually look that much different. Now, where it gets really interesting is if I pull up this one. So this is a heat map the top heat maps are the receive so the stations that i heard and the bottom heat maps are the transmit so top left we have the hamstick dipole and that reflects what we saw in the previous chart um good local receive around the um southern part of the uk out towards the netherlands down towards switzerland austria and a little bit up towards Denmark, Copenhagen as well. 
That's on the left on the hamstick dipole. Top right is the main antenna. Very similar thing. A little bit further, a little bit more going on down into uh, Italy and up into Finland, which we weren't getting on the hamstick. And the transmit heat maps down below, again, very, very similar. A little bit more going on uh, towards uh, the top right of the map, towards uh, Gothenburg. But um, ultimately, actually, there really isn't that much difference. And if we look at the SNR compass, so this is on, uh, on receive. So the left is the hamstick dipole and the right is the um, main station antenna. And uh, on the station antenna, you've got a couple uh, out to the right. So what this is plotting basically is the uh, heading on the map versus the signal strength. So each one of those dots is a station received and it's giving you the signal strength of each of those stations and the bearing from my station. And um, on receive, slightly more out towards the east on the uh, on the main station antenna. So some slightly stronger um, signals out towards the uh, around about 110 degrees or so. And then if I show you the same diagram for the transmit, so we're now looking at the uh, transmit and. Again, a, not a huge amount of difference. A little bit, a little bit more going on with the uh, main base antenna out towards the uh, hundred degrees or so. Uh, just um, a little bit more around the uh, uh, minus twenty to uh, minus twenty-five ish sort of region, but fundamentally, actually, not that much difference. So. Yeah, that's that's left me a little bit speechless to be honest. Let's let's not forget here that the hamstick dipoles were only six meters above the ground. The main station antenna is about thirteen to fourteen, about thirteen and a half meters above the ground. So the uh, it's almost twice as high above the ground. Now we're talking forty meters, so we're less than half a wavelength above the ground. So both antennas are going to be reasonably omnidirectional but at that height the base station antenna should have had quite an advantage now if we if i look briefly at the raw data in terms of the number of stations heard by me and other stations that heard me so if we talk the main station antenna first um, my transmissions were heard by 147 other stations versus 98 on the hamsticks and uh, on receive so in other words the number of stations i heard i heard 93 stations on the main antenna versus 72 on the hamsticks and um, total number of stations uh, in that was 240 for the uh, main station antenna and 170 so Conclusion, yes, the main antenna is absolutely better. We we expected that. The hamsticks are a compromise. They're loaded, they're shorter. Of, of course, they're not going to do as well as the main antenna, but we have to consider, again, the difference in height. The uh, hamsticks were six metres above the ground and main base station antenna, 13, 13 and a half metres above the ground. And... Um, to me, the difference is significantly less than what I expected. So in terms of are the hamsticks any good? Yeah, I, I think they're a viable solution. If you're limited on space, um, you're restricted on antennas, if you can get away with putting that up, or if you're on a POTA or SOTA where you've got limited space, it, it could be a viable option. Um, for me personally... Um, I'm seriously considering keeping them up just as a separate receive antenna because um, what you haven't seen on camera is I experimented with uh, receiving on the hamsticks in my right ear and transmitting with the transmit antenna in my left ear and um, 
as it faded, as the propagation changed and faded between the two, it actually made a really good secondary receive antenna. So um, there you go, a shock result. Hamstick dipoles actually work really well. <laughs>